show about sports by people who love sports. Welcome to Sports Isolated. Here's your host, Callum Duck. Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Sports Isolated. Here on the show today, we've got personal trainer, Kieran Reinbach. Kieran, how are you, mate? Good, thanks, mate. Yeah, how about you? Yeah, not not too bad. Uh, keeping myself busy with all these interviews. Uh, yeah. But uh, got, got to take the work while it's here. That's it, that's it. No, good to hear. Now, um, to start off with, do you mind um, telling us about um, yourself and yeah. obviously the things that you do? You're a personal trainer and yeah. you're obviously very heavily invested into your bodybuilding. So yeah. do you mind just telling our yeah. viewers a bit about yourself and what you do? Of course, yeah. So uh, I'm 27 now. Um, I've always been active my whole life. I uh, pretty much played uh, every sport uh, growing up at primary school and high school. Um, I think what, what got me into, say, bodybuilding in particular or, or weight training was actually um, downhill mountain biking. So I did that for uh, about six, seven years, both state and nationally. Um, and those longer tracks like Mount Buller, Threadbow, they end up being like six, seven minutes. So uh, I had to beef up a little bit more. I was always a skinny kid. Um, so I got told to go to the gym, had no idea what I was doing, made all the mistakes you probably could have made. Um, but I, I started to enjoy training a little bit more than I did riding my bike, which I should have been doing. Um, and then my body started to change and I became fascinated with the science behind it and why it was the case. Um, so I started to train a little bit more, ride less, and it, it sort of picked up a, a little bit from, from, from there. Yeah, so. Um, yeah, so you're obviously very heavily invested into your bodybuilding. Yeah. Yep. Do you mind telling us about what you've achieved so far yep. um, in terms of competitions and things like that? Yeah, yep. so I did my first comp, uh, I think I was 20 or 21, in the men's fitness category. So um, that's uh, the, a little bit skinnier. You wear board shorts, um, sort of something you see on like men's Ill uh, Sports Illustrated, that sort of thing. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I ended up doing all right. My mate pushed me to, to do that comp initially, um, who was a personal trainer and was training out of a studio and his boss actually prepped me for that comp. Um, but as, like personally, I wasn't my cup of tea, like I never wanted to go on stage. I was shy, I was always like um, withheld. Um, so yeah, when I did do that, it was definitely outside my comfort zone and ended up coming away with a second, I think was my first comp. So, uh, and it's progressed from there. It, uh, it becomes addictive. You always want to improve, um, on yourself, uh, and also on your placement. So yeah, it sort of just went after that. So in 2017, I went again and got a second, I moved up to men's physique, got a, a I did a local show at Murray Bridge, I think it was, got it first. And um, got third at the ICN as well. And then won the A&B uh, in 2017 too. And then, yeah, I've done a few shows again last year and got second in Sydney Nationals and after uh, the A&B as well. So that's probably like my previous one was just October. Yeah, so um, for those who don't necessarily know a lot about what a person go th goes through to enter one of those competitions. Yeah. What does your uh, training regime look like as well yeah. as your diet when you're preparing for a competition? Sure, so um, pretty much you're restricting your calorie intake uh, and you're, it, it, you're increasing your, uh, your, um, your output. So either your steps per day, your cardio, your training intensity, so you're burning through more calories than what you're consuming, but you're gonna do it gradually. So if you're gonna do it straight away, you're gonna lose all your muscle. So you gradually do it, you manipulate your macronutrients as well, so your proteins, your carbs, and your fats, so you can retain um, your hard-earned muscle while still dropping um, adequate weight and not getting too hungry. Uh, a standard day for me when I was prepping was usually getting up at about 5.36, doing, in the last couple of weeks, uh, and about 45 to an hour's cardio in the morning. Um, I then have uh, breakfast, go to work, um, 
do whatever else I have to do, client check-ins, things like that. Um, train at night about 6.30 once I finish work and then I would, um, yeah, go home, try and get an early night's sleep, get up and do it again. So um, you, you sort of, you run um, on less fuel, which is what really, I think, affects your performance both training-wise and also work-life balance-wise. So um, some people get hangry as such uh, and it's just because it does affect your mood a little bit. You are running less, you do get a little bit tired. So, uh, but it is worth it. I think if you're not feeling that sort of stage towards the end of a prep, then you're not coming in lean enough or you're not coming in um, uh, as well as you should be. Yeah, yeah. Um, you're also a personal trainer, so how long have you been a PT? And I suppose, what's the most rewarding thing about being a personal trainer? Yeah, sure. So um, I finished being PT uh, the start of 2018, so I was out of Shape Up Studios, which was on West Terrace. Um, and uh, he, I actually did my placement there, so my work experience there. Uh, and clients uh, that were there were like, Oh, yeah, when are we going to do sessions and things like that? So I was pretty much walking my way into it, which is really good. Um, Trent was the guy there, Trent Mitchington. Um, wealth of knowledge in the industry for like 20 odd years so he anything I was unsure about he definitely knew he was also a dietitian as well um, so he was yeah a good person to know uh, in terms of uh, a wealth of knowledge for sure um, in terms of most rewarding aspect would be uh, seeing clients I think well that their hard work pay off so um, seeing them happy and pleased with the, the results that they're getting um, and be like, oh, I wish I'd done this sooner or oh, only if I knew this um, back two years ago. And I think that's why I started to get into it. I was like, if I can save people the uh, time, which is a valuable asset and get them the results that they want a lot quicker, um, then that's just going to be more rewarding for me, not just for, for them too. So. Um, I mean, I've made all the, the mistakes over the years. I've been trained for eight years or something now, um, and I probably wasted three years of them, to be honest. Um, so if I was a little bit more switched on back then in, when I was a lot younger, 19, 20, 21, um, I think I would be a little bit better off now. Um, but yeah, that's what I want to do. It's like save people the, uh, of wasting their time, um, yeah. Yeah, I think it just shows how valuable, you know, getting that outside opinion and that education can be. And obviously, um, it's really cool um, for people to come on this show and, you know, I can learn different things from different people. And we've already had um, a personal trainer, Craig, come on the show and I've learned a lot from him ever since I trained with him since 17, I think it was 17. Yeah. So, um, yeah. How is COVID-19 affecting your work at the moment? Um, obviously, you work at the, the Muscle Works yeah. at Glenelg, fantastic store. Yeah. You've, uh, you've helped me out there many times uh, before. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. But in a more serious note, how is it affecting the personal training yeah. side um, of your work? Yeah, cool. So um, it hasn't really affected the, my personal training side as such, it's uh, towards the end of last year, uh, their studio was moving from West Terrace towards um, uh, Clemsic Way. Uh, so for me, it's a little bit too far out the way. I lived near town, so uh, I pulled my ties out with that one there. And I still had my clients that were still checking online. They're still training at your end times. They're still training at um, you know, the gym. They're still training um, around the place uh, or at home. So um, that didn't, it hasn't affected that uh, spectrum too much because I wasn't doing face to face in the, the gyms um, this year as yet. So um, yeah, it didn't affect any of that. But uh, I did. Uh, it does limit clients in terms of you know having that uh, equipment to use. So obviously the gyms are closed. You've got half that have a home gym set up, or they you know using what they can. Uh, resistance bands, um, you know, or I'll create a program which tailors to what they do have, uh, but to do have other uh, that almost drop off the bandwagon a little bit. They're invested into it, they like it, but you know, the times are tough. Um, so they almost weigh up, well look, I haven't got a gym, I haven't got equipment, I'm gonna have to put my fitness on the back wagon here. 
uh, they might not have a job too. Um, so yeah, they, 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 they pull back a little bit, but I know once the gyms open up and it does get back into normal uh, normality again, people will appreciate what they did have. So the gyms will be booming again, restaurants booming again. Um, you know, you'll go to the football games, man, I guarantee it'll be a sellout crowd. So um, I think at the moment it puts a perspective on things. So um, people will hopefully become a lot more appreciative out of this whole experience, um, which I think they will. Um, so yeah, it's gonna, it sucks now um, and the gyms are closed now. But um, once uh, it does reopen again, I think we'll start to thrive both the industry and also personal training businesses. So, yeah, we were yeah. obviously just chatting off camera before, um, saying that there's going to be uh, more people doing some cardiovascular exercise. Yeah. Obviously, you know, riding bikes, walking, yeah. running, um, you know, getting outdoors when you're in isolation is uh, going to be, you know, extreme, extremely important during these tough times. Yeah. Yeah, no, 100%, totally agree. Um, you know, people just switch their, um, switch their exercise around. So instead of saying benching, you know, 100 and odd kilos or whatever, they're, they're going out on their bike or they purchase the bike and they're switching that up instead. So they'll start riding bikes or they'll start running instead. Um, and when they come back to the gyms later on, they've picked up a new skill. So um, I've seen a lot of that lately. Um, mainly just having to chat to the guys that have been popping in the store um and that seems to be what they're doing others are purchasing a bit of equipment but um yeah they're just keeping fit um uh, keeping active uh, i think mentally as well it's really good uh, so as we mentioned before you work at muscle works at glenelg uh, on mosley street so we've uh, we've obviously known each other from the the store there so how is your uh, experience working at muscle works and obviously you know, knowing about all these different uh, supplements that yeah. people can take to obviously boost performance, you know, yeah. drop fat, yeah. uh, you know, gain in muscle size. Yeah. So how has your experiences in that store helped your clients with personal training? Yeah, definitely, of course. Um, so I knew, I'd say, when I started training, I started taking protein powder. So that was the first initial thing, but I was always inquisitive to why I would take it. Um, so I do research beforehand. I was always wanting to know what I would do, what to expect, why would I take this? Um, and I was just picking it up. And then ingredients as well, so different ingredients doing different things. Um, I learned over a period of time. So then once I did start working, I, initially it was like a heavyweight subs. Um, I did have a solid background bit of knowledge uh, at that time, even though I was working a couple of days a week there uh, on top of my study. Um, yeah, and it just it just kept going on from there. And in terms of affecting um, your, your clients, so um, they want to they, they, they want to get the recovery. They want to get the um, you know the, the performance. Um, they want to something that's going to aid them in their training. Um, and that's where supplements come into play. Um, so that if you're putting in the hard work, they're going to get the maximum effect out of the hard work you're putting into your training. Um, so yeah, I've, I've seen like quite a few clients will have say a gut issue or something and you've given them a product, say gut right of that and they're, they're like, shit, this actually works. And it's like, yeah, you only recommend products uh, that uh, will, will work for that person. Yeah. Um, going into a store, especially Muscle Works and Supplement Mart, we sell like everything. So it doesn't mean you need everything. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's definitely an individual um an individual situation. So if someone comes in, needs a weight gain, and someone comes in, they're struggling with uh, recovery and um, you know, they, they, they want some more energy or something pre-training. So everyone is a completely different situation. Um, and I think most people when they come into uh, any of our stores uh, end up leaving with one knowledge, two, the supplement they actually came in for, um, and three, um, more uh, knowledge about training as well, which is ties into with obviously personal training, all of uh, our stores do have people either in the field, uh, personal training, studying personal training, or um, in nutrition or sports background. So uh, physiotherapy as well, two of them are, so yeah, yeah. Yeah, obviously um, everyone on the planet's got a dif different uh, genetic makeup and okay. some supplements are gonna work for some people and they're not gonna work for others. So obviously, you know, you know, getting it right for the person is going to be really important. 
Um, what are the plans for you in the future in terms of your personal training um, yeah. as well as your bodybuilding and looking towards competitions hopefully later in the year? Sure, sure. So um, I was actually going to be doing season eight at the start of this year. Um, so I would have been about a week or two out at the moment, um, which about four weeks ago got canned um unfortunately yeah yeah obviously due to the restrictions they definitely get over more than 10 people at a show so um but with what's going on i think it's probably a, a right choice i mean the gyms are closed too so uh, you gotta put the health and safety above all um so I, I may look at like something towards the end of this year but it all depends on what pans out man with the um with the current restrictions and the virus and whatnot uh, but it, it Realistically, I'll probably say, like we were saying before, maybe October, November-ish, if there's anything around then. Otherwise, just hold off until some stuff next year, I think. Um, I try and maintain, like, leanish year round. So when I do um, decide to uh, pull the pin in and, 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 and shred down a bit more, um, I can sort of do it realistically within 10-ish, 12-ish weeks without too much hassle. So. Um, yeah, and in terms of the, the personal training side of things, um, I think it's going to remain steady, maybe slightly drop off over the next coming months with uh, unemployment being a factor, depending on what happens with the gyms too. Um, but I think it will, it will get better. Um, so I'd say, yeah, another one, three to six months, time will tell. Yeah. But I think once everything's back into normality, they'll start to bounce back, they'll start to uh, hit the ground and running and I think I said like before, we'll put it into more perspective so people will appreciate it more and I think it's only going to get busier than what it was before. Yeah, so um, if there's anyone watching at home who wants to get some online personal training coaching, where, yeah. where can they find you and how can they best get in contact with you? Sure, um, so it's just uh, kieran.reinboff on Instagram um, or you can just uh, message, message me on Facebook. Um, I've been a little bit stuck lately with my content, but I sometimes do put some stuff up on, on the old Instagram apart from food. Uh, so yeah, I do put a, a little bit of um, just a knowledge up sometimes. So yeah. yeah. Cool. Thank you very much for watching Sports Isolated. Kieran, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks, it's been Kat. a great Thanks insight me. having you on, on the show talking about bodybuilding, personal training, and supplements as well. Yeah. So if you like this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, we'll see you in the next video. Gotcha.